Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Elder Nathaniel, and to my right, Deacon Asaph. Today's topic is the truth of Christmas and New Year's. But before we open up, let's go to John 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, Latin man, black woman, Latin woman, the truth is that you are the biblical Israelites. And you've been given high holy days that you were commanded to keep by the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's open up with Psalm 64. Let's go there. Okay, I'm going to make a profound statement. Christmas is of the devil. Santa Claus is of the devil. If you ever look at the word Santa, let's rearrange those letters. The S-A-N-T-A, rearrange those letters. What does it spell? S-A-T-A-N, Satan, because that's the root of Santa, Satan. Let's go to Psalm 64 and verse 6, please. Psalms chapter 64, verse 6. They search out iniquity. This they here is the so-called white man. When he does his archaeological digs, he searches out iniquities. Read it again. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. They accomplish a diligent search with their archaeologists. Go ahead. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. The inward thought of the so-called white man is deep. Meaning what? He has a wicked purpose behind all his archaeological digs. It's not for the upliftment of society. It's to keep the Israelites bound in sin and captivity. Okay? From there, let's go to Genesis 10. Now, I'm going to show you how they search out iniquity. I want you to keep that scripture. Get your Bibles. Get your pens and paper. Okay? Write these scriptures down. Okay? So we started off reading, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Okay, let's go to Genesis 10, verse 6 through 10. Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush. Now the sons of Ham, who are the sons of Ham? Ham, when you get a Bible dictionary, says he became the father of all the dark races, but not the Negroes. Okay, read it again. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim, mm -hmm. and Put and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Siba, Hibala, and Sabta, and Rama, and Sabteka, and the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. Now this is what we wanted to get to. And Cush begat Nimrod. Go ahead. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He began to be a mighty one in the earth, meaning a leader, a conqueror. Go ahead. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. When it says he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, who did he hunt? He hunted the souls of men. He gathered men together against the one true God. Was that it? No. Go Wherefore ahead. it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Mm, what, what verse is that? That was nine. Go ahead. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Babel is the root of the word Babylon. Go ahead. And Erech, and Achad, and Kalne, in the land of Shinar. From there, let's go to Ezekiel 8. Now, remember we started off saying... They accomplish a diligent search. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. I, I took you next to Nimrod. I want you to remember that name, Nimrod, who was the son of Cush, an Ethiopian, okay? Now, Ezekiel 8, verse 13 and 14. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. So the Lord is showing Ezekiel great abominations that the Israelites were guilty of. Go ahead. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. There sat Israelite women weeping for Tammuz. Who was Tammuz? Tammuz was the quote-unquote reincarnation of Nimrod. This was the boy king, the Messiah, okay, of the Ethiopians, of Babylon. And his mother's name was Seramis, Samaramis, however you pronounce it. From there, let's go to Jeremiah 10. Now remember, we started off the scripture said, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. What's the topic? Christmas. What does Christmas and New Year's have to do with Nimrod? What does it have to do with Tammuz? You shall find out. Come on, where you at? Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Who is he speaking to? O house of Israel. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, 
Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. What heathen nation have you black men and Latin men been learning from? The so-called white man. Everything you've learned, you've learned from your slave master, the so-called white man. That's the heathen that we're commanded not to learn from today. Back then we went where? In ancient Babylon. We were in the Babylonian captivity under the Ethiopians. Read that again. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen, right. and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Don't be dismayed at the sun, moon, and stars. Come on. For the heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at because them. the heathen are dismayed at the sun, the moon, and the stars. For the customs of the people are vain. For the customs of the heathen are vain. Vain means what? Vain means lies. Watch this. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Read it again. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Come on. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Meaning there's an axeman that cuts the tree out of the forest. They deck it with silver and with gold. Then that tree that they just cut down, they decorate it with silver and with gold. What holiday is this talking about that originated in ancient Babylon? That they cut a tree down out of the forest and they decorate it with silver and gold. Come on. They fasten it with nails and with hammers then that they, move not. Then they hammer this tree down with nails and hammers. Today you got a tree stand. But back in ancient times, they literally did that. Go ahead. They are upright as the palm tree. They are upright as what? As the palm tree. They are upright as the palm tree. Because originally in ancient Babylon, the tree that was used that they decorated with silver and gold was the palm tree. But today you don't use the palm tree. What's the name of that tree they use? Pine, the pine they tree. Right. Right, or evergreen right. tree, right. Was that it? They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. But they, what does it say, but speak not? Because when you examine history, they said the spirit of Nimrod would inhabit the tree. And if you didn't do good, this tree would come and attack you. <laughs> good. They must needs be born. They, they, these trees got to be carried, okay? Wait, hold, wait, hold that. Get me that book from Babylon, to, the two Babylons, I mean. Hold that up to the camera so they can see it. The two... Babylon's is written by Alexander. What's his name? Hislop. Hislop. Alexander Hislop. Okay. I want you to go to page ninety-seven. Okay. So remember, at the beginning of the lesson, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. I took you to Nimrod from there. I took you to Tammuz. Now I took you to ancient Babylon, where they God told us learn not the ways of the heathen. Okay. For the customs of the people are vain, meaning lies. One cuts a tree out of the forest. The work of the axeman with the axe. Okay, where you at? Page 97. Page 97. Read the highlighted parts for us. The candles lighted on Christmas Eve and used so long as the festive season lasts were equally lighted by the pagans on the eve of the festival of the Babylonian God to do honor to him. Of the Babylonian God to do honor to him. Who was that? Nimrod. Go ahead. For it was one of the distinguished peculiarities of his worship to have light wax candles on his altars. Good. The Christmas tree, now so common among us. The Christmas tree, now so common among us. Was equally common in pagan Rome and pagan Egypt. Mm -hmm. In Egypt that denoting the pagan Messiah as Baal Tamar. The fur referring to him as Baal Barit. And this entirely accounts for putting of the Yule log into the fire on Christmas Eve and the appearance of the Christmas tree the next morning. Now, go to page 98. I ain't done yet. Go ahead, page 98. Page 98. Go ahead. The divine child born at the winter solstice. The divine child born at the winter solstice. Who is this divine child? Tammuz, that you read about in Ezekiel. Go ahead. The divine child born at the winter solstice was born as a new incarnation of the great God. Of the great God Nimrod. Go ahead. After that God had been cut in pieces. Because Nimrod was killed. Go ahead. On purpose to revenge his death upon his murderers. Now the great God, cut off in the midst of his power and glory, was symbolized as a huge tree. The, he was what? Symbolized as what? Symbolized as a huge tree. That's why in Jeremiah it says, wait, let me get that. It said the tree must needs be born. Then it said they cannot do evil, neither can they speak. Because the doctrine was that the spirit of Nimrod would come back in this daggone tree. What verse? Jeremiah 10 verse 5. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. Right. They must needs be born, right. because they cannot go. 
They, be, they can't move. They can't walk. Be not afraid of them. Be not afraid of them. For they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. So now go back to the book. This is where it's coming from. That part that you read about uh, the spirit coming in there. Um, the incarnation, that part. Now the great God cut off in the midst of his power and glory was symbolized as a huge tree. Mm -hmm. The Christmas tree, as has stated, was generally at Rome. A different tree, even the fir. But the very same idea was implied in the palm tree. In the what tree? In the palm tree. Didn't we just read in Jeremiah they are upright as the palm tree? Because they used, they used to use palm trees. But today they use the evergreen tree. Go ahead. And the palm tree was implied in the Christmas fir. Mm. For that covertly symbolized the newborn God of Baal. What Earth. did that tree symbolize? Covertly symbolized the newborn God as Baal Berith. You see that? So you Negroes, you ain't. <laughs> Just listen close. Let's keep reading. Therefore, the 25th of December. The what? The 25th of December. Mm -hmm. The day that was observed at Rome as the day when the victorious God reappeared on earth. Mm -hmm. Was held at. So the victorious God reappeared on earth December 25th. Come on. Was held at. Natalis Invicti, Solis, mm -hmm. the birthday of the unconquered sun. The birth of the unconquered sun. That was Tammuz, okay, which was Nimrod. Go ahead. Now the Yule Log is the dead stock of Nimrod, mm -hmm. defied as the sun god. Now some of you Hasidity Negroes, you use uh, Yule Logs, but the rest of you don't know what you're talking about a Yule Log, but say that every time about again. Now the Yule Log is a dead stock of Nimrod, mm -hmm. defiled Defied as the sun god. Deified as the sun god. De yeah, deified as the sun god, but cut down by his enemies. Mm. The Christmas tree is Nimrod, red of Ibis. Meaning resurrected. Good. The slain god came to live again. The slain god. So it's telling you that this tree symbolizes Nimrod. Right, you got a tree in your house that symbolizes Nimrod. The rebirth of Nimrod. Right, the rebirth of Nimrod. Where you at? The singular practice still kept up in the South on Christmas Eve of kissing under the mistletoe. Mistletoe. It says bow here. Oh, okay. So but it's the mistletoe. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. Was derived from Babylon was a representation of the Messiah. You see what the mistletoe represented? The Messiah. Nimrod. Reincarnated as Tammuz. Go ahead. Okay. The mistletoe became the token of divine reconciliation to man. The kiss being a well-known token of pardon and reconciliation. Yeah, what that kiss under the mistletoe represented? Pardon. Go ahead. According to the one version of the story of the death of Adonis in Tammuz. Of course, Tammuz and Adonis was the same guy. In the Greek philosophy, they called Tammuz Adonis. Go ahead. It was as we have seen in consequences of a wound from the tusk of a boar that he died. Mm -hmm. Go to page 102 now. That the pagan festival at the winter solstice, in other words, Christmas was held in honor of the birth of the Babylonian Messiah. You see that? You see what the scholars put together? The scholars know that. So now, let's go from there. Let's close that. From there, let's go back to Jeremiah 10. Start at verse 2 again. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. One cuts a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They use an axe. Come they on. deck it with silver and with gold. They decorate it with silver and gold. And there's a song out. Silver and gold. Silver, silver and gold. gold. <laughs> they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Mm. They are upright as the palm tree. But speak not. Because in ancient Babylon and ancient Egypt, they used the palm tree. Rome used the fir tree. America uses the evergreen tree. Go ahead. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They don't speak because the spirit of Nimrod don't inhabit the tree. They must needs be born. They got to be carried because it's a dead tree. Because they cannot go. They can't walk. Be not afraid of them. God told the Israelites, don't be afraid of that custom, that lie. For they cannot do evil, neither also it is in them to do good. So now, from there, let's go to Revelation 11. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you black men and black women, Latin men and Latin women that think Christmas is so old. And the giving of gifts, it's for the children. Y'all simple as hell. Revelation 11. Let's start at verse 8. 
Revelation 11, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Now, the dead bodies is talking about, I'm going to go through it slowly on another lesson, but it's talking about the two kingdoms of Israel. In this chapter, it talks about the two prophets. The two prophets are the two kingdoms, which are Judah and Israel. Read it again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. This whole thing is a spiritual meaning behind it. Because we're not physically dead, we're spiritually dead here in the great city, which is Babylon the Great, the United States of America. And you, you want the precept for that to yeah, show that? Proverbs 21, 16 explains to you about um, walking in the congregation of the dead, right. which is right here. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So our people wandered out of the way of understanding of who they are, what is required of them. So we are in the congregation of the dead. That's where all your churches are, the congregation of the dead. So back to Revelation 11. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. This place, America, is spiritually called Sodom. Why? Because they got rights for homosexuals, okay? Why is this place spiritually called Egypt? Because just like in ancient Egypt, we were slaves there, we're slaves here in the United States of America. Check, take out a dollar bill. What's on the back of the dollar bill? A pyramid with the all-seeing eye of Ra. Why is that? Because this place is spiritual Egypt, okay? Understand that, come on. And they no, the, we're also where also our Lord was crucified because the black image of Christ was crucified here. Okay, read. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see the dead bodies three days and a half, three hundred and fifty years, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in grave. Right, because here read that part again. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations meaning what. The United States of America, because here in America you have the people, you have all nations, kindreds, and tongues here. This is the great melting pot. Read it again. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, three hundred and fifty years, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in grave. Because we're not physically dead. That's why. Read. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. This is the part I wanted to get to. And because they made us slaves, because they destroyed us spiritually and mentally, it said what? And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. They rejoiced over us when they destroyed us mentally and spiritually. Go ahead. And make merry. And make what? And make merry. I'm going to pause there because how do you start your Christmas off? And what do you say? Merry Christmas. Read that part again. And make merry mm -hmm. and shall send gifts one to another. Stop. See, there's, there's, some, there's some history that you black people don't know. Back in, there was a time when the gifts was not from Toys R Us, but it, the gifts was your sons. The gifts was your daughters. They gave our children, us, as gifts one to another. Not only on Christmas, but on their birthdays, but during Thanksgiving, any kind of celebration, we were given as gifts. And I'm going to show you a clip where they show a young black boy being given as a gift to the demonic white woman. Okay, was that it? All well, it went down to is 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets because tormented them. Because these two them, kingdoms tormented them. Tormented them that dwelt on the earth. That's now it. from there, let's go to Luke 2. Luke chapter 2. Because the next thing, a lot of you Latins, you like to talk about um, uh, Three Kings Day. Oh, Three Kings Day, you bunch of... Let's go to Luke 2. I'm going to show you that there was no three kings, okay? The three wise men. Luke 2, let's start at verse 7. Luke chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And she brought forth her firstborn son mm -hmm. and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger. Laid Christ in the manger. Go ahead. Because there was no room for them in the inn. There was no room in the inn. Go ahead. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. Shepherds abiding in the, why were they in the fields with their sheep? Because this was the springtime. Go ahead. 
keeping watch over their flock by night. Mm -hmm. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Uh -oh. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, mm -hmm. for unto you... And when it says all people, it's talking about all Israel. Go ahead. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. What verse you at? Verse 11. Go ahead. And this shall be a sign unto you. Mm. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, good will towards men. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into the heavens, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us unto us. So now the shepherds went to Bethlehem to see the child in the manger. Go ahead. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph. And they the, came with haste and found Mary and Joseph. Go ahead. And the babe lying in the manger. Go ahead. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Stop right there. Let's go to Matthew 2 now. Now I'm going to this for a reason. Showing you that when Christ was born, okay, they put him in a manger. The, the shepherds came because the angels told them what was happening. The shepherds came and they saw Joseph and Mary and the baby Christ. A, a baby. Now we're in Matthew 2. I just want verse 1, 2. After you read the verse, I'm going to tell you where to jump, okay? okay. 1 and 2, then we're going to jump to 7, okay? Watch this, and I need y'all to pay close attention. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. There came wise men from the east. To Jerusalem. What's in the east? You have Babylon. Remember, this is after the Babylonian captivity, after the Persian captivity, after the Greek captivity. This is the captivity under Rome now. So wise men from the east is not talking about other races. It's talking about Israelites. Like when you read in Acts 2, it says there was Jews that came from Babylon and Persia and those sort of places. All right? Read. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying... Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. We have seen his star in the east. Go ahead. And are come to worship him. Now jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Watch this. Then Herod, when he had privily called the men, wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Now pay close attention to that verse. Herod's question to the wise men. Did it say three? No. It said wise men, okay? There was a caravan there, not three guys. He asked them, Herod, who was an Idumean, an Edomite, asked the wise men, what time did his star appear? That's going to play a pivotal point as we read on. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. And when they came, and when they were come into the house. When the wise men were come into the house. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother. They saw the young child, no longer a baby. They saw the young child with what? With Mary, his mother. Go ahead. And fell down and worshipped him. Mm -hmm. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. That's why the white man says three kings, because they gave the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the scriptures don't say three kings. Go ahead. And Jump down to verse, what verse was that? That was 12. Read 13. 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother. And flee into Egypt. Flee where? Flee into Egypt. Flee into Africa. Read. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy now, him. the reason the angel told him to hide in Africa was why? So Because they could blend in with the other black people that dwelt in Africa. Now, what verse was that? It was 13, right? Yes. Jump to 16. Watch this. Verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had dil diligently inquired of the wise men. Notice that bottom part. It says, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. That's why in verse 7, Herod asked them, what time did the star appear? Obviously, they told him two years ago. So when the wise men got to the house, how old was Christ? Two and under. 
in between there. That's why Herod in verse 16, it said he started to kill the boys from two and under. Understand that. So when the wise men came, Christ could have been, he was a two year. That's why I called him a young child. He was no longer a baby. So you got these Christmas pageants where they show the the, uh, the wise men go, they, the wise men go into the manger, number one, that's wrong. Then they show him as a baby when the wise men get there, that's wrong. Right. Okay? They messed up the time. Right, <laughs> messed up the time. From there now, let's go to Luke 2. Because now the question is, well, when was Christ born? Luke 2, verse 40 to 42. Luke Watch chapter this. 2, verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. So the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. This is Christ. Filled with wisdom and grace of God was mm -hmm. upon him. Now, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. Every year they went to the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. See that? And when he was 12 years old. So what is that verse telling you? That's telling you the time when he was born on the Passover. Understand that. Read that part again. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Real quick, let's go back to that book, The Two Babylon. Get me page 93. December 25th as Christmas Day, a festival was celebrated among the heathen at the precise time of the year in honor of the birth of the son of the Babylonian queen of heaven. That's Ceramicus. And it may fairly be presumed that in order to conciliate the heathen and to swell the number of nominal and adherents of Christianity, the same festival was adopted by the Roman church, mm. giving it only the name of Christ. Mm. That See that? So they put the name Christ in that pagan holiday. That's why they call it Christmas. Go ahead. That Christmas was originally a pagan festival is beyond all doubt. Beyond all doubt. Go ahead. The time of year and the ceremonies which it is celebrated prove its origin. Mm -hmm. In Egypt, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the queen of heaven, was born at this very time, mm. about the time of the winter solstice. The very name by which Christmas is popularly known among ourselves, Yule Day, proves at once its pagan and Babylonian origin. Yule is a Chaldee's name for an infant or a little child. See that? And as, Dece and as the 25th of December. And as the 25th of December. So that's when the child was born. Okay, what does that say right there? Was called by our pagan Anglo-Saxon ancestors. Yule Day or the Child's Day. Or the Child's Day. Yule Day or the Child's Day. That's why they always show the baby in a, in a manger. In a always manger. like that. Go ahead. Yule Day or the Child's Day and the night that preceded it. Mother Night. Mother Night. Long before they came in contact with Christianity, that sufficiently proves its real characters. You see that? Far and wide in the realms of paganism was this birthday observed. See that? So now, from there, let's deal with New Year's real quick. Okay? When does the year start for the Most High God? Let's go to Deuteronomy 16. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 16. I just want verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. Observe the month of Abib. Now write that down, Abib, A-B-I-B. -B. Observe the month Abib. And keep the Passover. And keep the Passover, because why? Passover came in the month of Abib. Unto the Lord thy God. So now, was that in verse 1? No. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. So now, remember this, that in the month of Abib, we came out by night. It's talking about the Passover, okay? From there, let's go to Exodus 12. Now, when you get a Bible dictionary... Okay, you can get the Zondervans or any kind. Look up the word abib. It literally means ear of corn, which comes when? Spring. Okay, that's what it means, the spring season. Okay, from there, Exodus 12, we want verse 2. Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. Now remember the month of Bib. We came out of Egypt. We were to keep the Passover. Go ahead. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So now, we're discussing when God says the new year begins. Read it again. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. This month shall be to you the beginning of months. Go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Go ahead. What's, what verse was that? Two? That was two. Jump, let's see what he's talking about. Jump down to verse 26. We want to establish what is God talking about. 26. Uh, verse 26. 
And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. So when the Passover begins, that's the beginning of the year to you. That's the month of Abib, the beginning of the year to you. Read it again. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And this people bowed the head and worshiped. You see that? So now, what is the Bible letting us know? That the month of Bib, which is the spring, that's when the first spring month, that's the beginning of the year. That's when, that's the same month where the Passover is commanded to be celebrated, okay? Not the dead of winter, but spring in the month of Abib. Real quick. So where do we get that December stuff from? Let's go to Daniel 7. Okay, Daniel 7 and verse 25. Okay. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Listen good to this. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times in the dividing of time. Let's read it again. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Who is the he here in Daniel 7, 25? It's talking about the United States of America, the so-called white man. How does he speak great words against the Most High? Hold on. Give me Isaiah 14, 13. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Space travel. Go ahead. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will enslave the Israelites in North America. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will create airplanes too. I will be like the Most High. I will be like the Most High. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So Lucifer, the devil white man, that's what it's talking about, would sit upon the mount of the congregation, which are the Israelites, in the sides of the north, meaning North America. Go back and, to Daniel. And it calls him Lucifer in the 12th verse. Right. Go back to Daniel now, that part again. And they shall do what to us? Daniel 7, 7 25. verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Here comes. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. How has he worn us out? In slavery. You ever get a pair of sneakers, brand new sneakers, and you get the bottom of them, you see all the, you can see the symbols under the bottom of the sneaker, the grid marks and all that, but you wear them for a while. You wear them and you wear them and you wear them. What happens to the grid marks under the sneakers? It gets worn out. So worn out that you, what kind of sneaker was this that I was wearing? So now, you, let's say, he said it, the scripture said he would wear out the saints of the Most High, which are the Israelites. How did he wear us out? What does that mean? Meaning he wore us out in slavery so much that you, we don't know we Israelites no more. We've been worn out in slavery so harshly. We've forgotten who we are. We've forgotten our culture, our customs, our feast days. We've forgotten our nationality. We forgot our own woman. We forget our own kids. We have been worn out as a people. Understand that. Read it again. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, mm -hmm. and think to change times and laws. That's the part we wanted to get to also. And think to change times and laws. Let's deal with the times that this white man has changed. We just went through daylight savings time, correct? Where in the springtime, it's spring one hour forward, and in the fall, they say spring the clock an hour back, okay? So they think to change times, okay? Understand that. Then it said, and laws, okay? So now, what happened? God says, when was the beginning of the year? In the month of Abib, which is the spring. The white man says, no, we're going to change that. It's no longer being a spring, this month of Bib stuff. Let's get rid of that. Make it uh, the January, January 1st. 1st, in the dead of winter. And, and called everybody who was still doing it in April an April fool. That's Thank where you. the saying came from. To play tricks on people because the people felt they were tricked because they were still bringing in the air in April. Exactly. exactly. That's why at the beginning of the lesson, remember it said, Psalm 64, it said they, accompli they do a diligent search 
Okay, they searched out iniquities, they accomplished a diligent search. They discovered all these paganist holidays and instituted those things into the United States of America. And by that, they wore us out with their lies. So all you so-called black men and black women, you gotta wake up to the truth that you're the Israelites. You gotta get become born again. We gotta honor the new year. When? In the springtime and celebrate Passover. We gotta stop keeping Christmas. We gotta stop celebrating the New Year's Eve celebration because all that's paganism, all that's of the devil. Understand that, okay? From there, let's go back to Jeremiah 10 again. Let's go back to Jeremiah 10 and verse 25. All right. Jeremiah 10 and 2, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 10 and verse 2, I'm sorry. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Hear what the Bible commands us. Learn not the way of the heathen. Who is the heathen that we're learning from today? The so-called white man. We are commanded not to learn. Back in Jeremiah's time, where was the, the Israelites at? In ancient Babylon, under the Ethiopians. And Jeremiah told our ancestors then, learn not the ways of the heathen. Don't follow the customs of these Ethiopians that set up Nimrod and Tammuz and Ceramicus and the tree, the palm tree. Don't follow it. Now here we are in the United States of America. In America, in their archeological digs, they say, oh, Look what ancient Babylon used to celebrate. They had a custom called Christmas. Not Christmas. Uh, uh, Soul Invictus and all that. They said, oh, let's bring that custom here to America. Okay? And they set up, they said, oh, we don't got to use a palm tree. Let's use an evergreen tree. Okay? And they set up a tree and they decorated it with silver and gold. And they gave our sons and daughters as gifts, one to another on their holidays. Okay? So read that again. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord God, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Right, because what did the heathen do? Because they're so dismayed at the signs of heaven. They put star a star on the top of the tree. They said, oh, this will be the north star on the top of the tree. Then they put bulbs around. They said, oh, these are smaller stars. And then one time it was heads of people on these trees. Okay? So from there, let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 48. I'm going to show you something. The celebrating of Christmas, the celebrating of New Year's Eve is all evil. It's all demonic. And why does why does Santa Claus, which is Satan Claus, always have a red suit? What does red commonly signify? Sin. I'm going to say it again. Sin. Okay? And why you got to come down your chimney where fire comes out of? Right. <laughs> and your door come through the window. <laughs> Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Let's read that again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So remember we read in Daniel 7, 25, where it said he would wear out the saints. Now here's another priest. I'm gonna jump back on that bandwagon again. Read that again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So we've been serving this so-called white man for almost 400 years. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. We have to serve this man if we want food to put on our tables. Okay. We had to serve him picking the tobacco, picking cotton, picking sugar cane. Okay. Go ahead. And in thirst, if we wanted water, we had to serve, break our backs. For this man, go ahead. And in nakedness. And if we want clothes to cover up in our naked bodies, we are to serve from sun up to sundown. Go ahead. And in want of all things. I want that part right there. And in want of all things. Meaning what? If even if we want to learn the Bible, who do we have to go to to learn the Bible? The so-called white man. And what did he do? He taught us Christmas. He taught us New Year's Eve. Okay. Why? Hold that. Go back to Psalm 64. I don't want to forget that thought where we started at right there. Psalm 64 and verse 6 again. Psalm chapter 64 verse 6. They search out iniquities. They're archaeological digs. They search out iniquities. They get paid millions of dollars to search out iniquities. It's not by accident that we celebrate Christmas. They searched it out. Read it again. They search out iniquities. 
They accomplish a diligent search. They accomplish a diligent search. They don't stop until they dig up the last remains of things. Go ahead. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. It said, did it say every one of them? Every one of them. So it's not just one or two white people. It said, the, read it again. Both the inward thought of every one of them. Every one of them. Yes, black man. If you married the white woman, it's talking about her too. And the thought of every one of them. Every one of them is what? And the heart is deep. Is deep. Every last one of them. Okay. Read the next verse. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they be wounded. You know what that arrow is? A missile. Because it's going to be destruction here. God's going to shoot at this, the wicked here. The United States of America with a nuclear missile. Understand that. Read it again. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. Let's start off at verse 5. I like that one. Verse 5. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. Mm -hmm. They commune of laying snares privily. They, they what? They commune of laying snares privily. They, read it again. They commune. I want that word, commune. They commune. They commune of laying snares of privily. Of laying snares, laying traps privily, okay? So what is that talking about? When they sat down with the pilgrims, when they sat down with the United Nations building, go ahead, they read it again. They commune of laying snares privily. They commune of laying traps privily privately. They're not going to tell everybody, oh, we're going to set up Christmas and New Year's Eve as a trap for the Israelites. They ain't going to say that. Read that part again. They commune of laying snares privately. They do that privately. They sit amongst one another and they say, listen, we just did some digs. We discovered something called uh, uh, where they set up a tree, which was the spirit of Nimrod. Let's put Christ to that. Okay. We can lead the slaves that way. Okay. Read it again. They commune of laying snares privily. They're not going to say, you know what? And this dig also showed us that um, the new year at one time, according to the Bible, was in a spring. But we don't want to do that. We could do like ancient Babylon did because we discovered they celebrated in the dead of winter. Let's do that. They commune of laying traps privately. They're not going to tell you because a lot of you think you, you're accepted. No, you're under the delusion of inclusion. Okay, read on. They say, who shall see them? They say, who shall, who's going to know that we're the wicked upon the earth? Who's going to know that we set up all these holidays, all these customs based on ancient Babylon, which is based upon Satan? Who's going to know we did this? Wow. And, they, and they know Negroes don't read anyway, so a Negro ain't going to go search it out. Exactly. <laughs> okay, go ahead. They search out iniquity. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Let's go now to Isaiah 29. So we read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 48, it said, and we got to serve him for lack of all things, in want of all things. That includes understanding of the Bible and anything. We have to go to the white man to get understanding. That's why a lot of you accept Christmas and New Year's Eve. You never once ask them, well, can you prove that in the Bible? Right. You never once do that. But when we bring out the truth, watch, we get a million letters. Right. Uh, how, 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 how can you prove that? Right. How can you say, now you want to question us. Right. Because we're your brothers. We're your, we're, we look like you. Because now we read it, we found it. Right. Question them. Right. But there's no proof of Santa Claus or the tree or anything, but y'all want to follow that. Exactly. <laughs> From there, Isaiah 29, verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near to me with their mouth, you black men and black women, Latin men and Latin women, you draw near to God with your mouth, how you love the Lord. Go ahead. And with their lips do honor me. You say, oh, I love the Lord. I love him. Yes, I does. Go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. Meaning you won't do no law, this Bible says. The Bible give you a law, you go, no, we, we ain't doing that. Read that part again. But have, but have removed their heart far from me. Go ahead. And their fear toward me. And your fear. Towards God, meaning all that you understand about God, about the Bible. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. What man taught you the Bible? The so-called white man taught you the Bible. Read that part again. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And your fear towards God is taught by the so-called white man. Understand that. 
That's what the Bible is proving, okay? So you have not learned the Bible yet, but before destruction comes, you're going to learn this Bible, okay? Was that it? Yeah. From there, let's go to Colossians 2 and 8. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Read that again. Beware lest any man spoil you. Stop. L Beware lest any man spoil you, mean corrupt you, through the philosophies and vain deceit. After the traditions of men. After the traditions of men. So who has spoiled our race? Who has spoiled our nation? Who has spoiled our 12 tribes with philosophies? After the traditions of men. The so-called white man first and foremost. Because everything, I, I've got to say this. Everything you, you so-called black people. I'm saying so-called because you're not really black. I'm just using it metaphorically. You so-called black people, everything that you know, where have you gotten it from? the so-called white man, all your understanding. And you know what you got the nerve to write us and say? You use the white man's book. Show us proof that the Bible is the white man's book. I ain't see that scripture yet. Show me God is white. Show me Christ is white. Show me the Israelites white. You ain't got no scripture, but you unlearned black men are the first ones to pull, pull your lip out as it drags the floor and say stupid stuff. You the first ones. But guess what? The Bible bears witness that everything you know, you've learned from the slave master. The slave master didn't teach us this. What we're teaching you, the white man didn't teach this to us. Okay? Read that again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So the man that is speaking of first and foremost is the white man. Because where was Paul writing this? Under Roman captivity. Read it again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. All your philosophies about Christmas. All your philosophies about New Year's Eve. All your lying, false philosophies. Go ahead. And vain deceit. And they're all vain deceits, vain lies. Go ahead. After the tradition of men. After the traditions of the white man. Because that's where you follow these holidays from. The white man. Go ahead. After the rudiments of the world. Come on. And not after Christ. Because all those days you celebrate are not after Christ. Show us December 25th. Show us that. Show us Christmas. Huh? Show us New Year's Eve in the dead of winter. Show us that. Oh, it is silence now. Okay? So you have no choice, black and Latin man, but to repent. It's, you only got two options. You'll either repent or drop dead. That's the only two options you got. Okay? From there, let's go to Titus. Titus chapter 1 and verse 14. Titus chapter 1 verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. And read it again. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Stop. Let's deal with some Jewish fables. What does the word Jewish? Let's deal with that word. The word, the, the, the suffix ish, I-S-H at the end of that word. What does ish mean? It means pertaining to. Not the original, but it pertains to something. So like when they say, um, I'll meet you around five-ish. I'm not saying I'm gonna meet you at five, I'm saying somewhere around five, right? Y'all with me so far? So read that again. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Let's deal with Jewish fables. Jewish meaning fables that pertain, a word fable is a lie, that pertain to the people of God, the Jews. So like what? Christmas is a Jewish fable because you stick the birth of Christ in it. The white man has stuck Joseph in it, stuck Mary in it, and stuck the angels in it. He painted them all white and then said, this is God's holiday. It's a Jewish fable. Then with Santa Claus, what's his real name? Saint Nick. Saint Nick. Saint Nicholas, by the way, they call Santa Claus uh, Saint Nick. Saint Nick was a real Israelite in Russia who celebrated not December the 25th, but he celebrated Hanukkah, which is in English, the Feast of Dedication. And he gave gifts to the orphans and the widows all during the Hanukkah celebration, during the celebration of the Feast of Dedication. And there's many paintings of St. Nicholas as a black man in Russia, okay? So now, they took that, the scholars took that, remember we read they do a diligent search, okay? They said, oh, 
St. Nicholas. Mm, let's make him a fat white man, put a red suit on him, give him the ho ho ho, and a, a Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, and give gifts to everybody throughout the world. And put a name on him that when you unscramble it, you get Satan. Right. Exactly. Okay. Because Negroes is simple and <laughs> they'll right. never figure it out. What a coincidence that Santa and Satan is the same words mixed up. Exactly. All right. All right. And then let's <laughs> add a tree and light bulbs. All that stuff is symbolic. All of that stuff has meaning that you Negroes don't know because you don't research. You don't check. That's why I said in Isaiah chapter 64, who sees us? Who's going to know? Exactly. You have to ask yourself, what the hell? Does a tree and some daggone bulbs got to do with, with Christ? With Christ, what does that got to do with anything? Right. It has nothing. The tree and the bulbs have nothing to do with Christ, but it has all to do with Nimrod. Right. Because it said the spirit of the tree represented Nimrod. Understand that. Back to Titus 1.14. Titus chapter 1.14. Not giving heed to Jewish Fable. So Christmas is a Jewish fable. Uh, 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 Saint Nick is a Jewish fable. Uh, what else? Uh, the Yule, Yule Law. The Yule Law. All that that they say that pertains to the Jews is all lies. The mistletoe. Kissing right. under the mistletoe. Kissing Big under the mistletoe. tradition. Everybody expecting a kiss that day. Exactly. It's all Jewish fables, meaning lies that pertain around the Jews. Okay, and, and you could Google December 25th and see that it was a winter solstice. Right. That's something that they don't hide. That's where they got that day from, in honor of the sun. Exactly, exactly. And you know what? This week, well, maybe it's going to be some time, but there was a thing on the news on CNN where atheists put up a billboard that right, right, said, right, 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 what did right. it say? Mm -hmm. He put a big billboard up and said, Christmas, something like, uh, has nothing to do with Christ. Right. Something like that. He said, in this season, remember the reason we celebrate it. He said, he, oh, he says Christmas was never anything to do with the Bible. Right. And all the fake Christians like you got angry and mad. Okay? So we're back in Titus 1 and 14 again. Titus 1 verse 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables. Not giving heed to Jewish fables like Christmas and New Year's Eve. And commandments of men. Because that is a commandment of men. What? Man gave you that commandment to celebrate Christmas and New Year's Eve. That's right, the so-called white man, your slave master. Go ahead. And commandments of men that turn from the truth. And commandments of men, what's their purpose? That turn from the truth. Their purpose is to turn you from the truth. That's why in Psalm 64, it says they accomplish a diligent search. They search out iniquities. Their purpose, their reasoning, is to turn the Israelites from the truth. That's why they forbade us to read. They forbid our people to read. They indoctrinated us with their lies. Okay? Hold that. Give me Matthew 23. I'm going to show you something else. Okay? Matthew 20. Now, was it Matthew 23 where it says, Call no man master? I think it's there. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8. But be not ye called rabbi. Rabbi is a Hebrew word for master. For one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Read verse 10. Verse 10. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. What did the so-called white man do to us during the time of slavery? He forced us to call him master. You don't think he knew these scriptures? He read that, but he said, oh, no. He says, call me master. And he slapped the hell out of you black men and black women. If you didn't call him master, and I'm going to show you a clip on that. Now, you over there, I want you to repeat. Thank you, master. Thank, Thank you, you master. master. Yes, master. Yes, yes master. master. Please, master. Please, Please master. master. And you, never look a white man in the eye. You hear me? Never. Look at me. Thank you, Master. Not in the face, you bastard. Now remember that. Remember, earlier in the lesson, we read about Herod seeking to destroy the baby, the young child Christ. Remember that? Remember that? Revelation started 12, chapter 12, I want verse 2. We want 2 through 5, that's it. Revelation 12, verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in verse 1, in case somebody's reading 1. Revelation 12, verse 1. 
And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun the, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, this woman represents the twelve tribes of Israel. The sun and the moon just represents knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Go ahead. And she being with child cried. And she being with child cried. Travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Watch this. Now this woman represents Israel. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Having seven heads. Having seven heads. And ten horns. And ten horns. Seven empires and ten smaller empires. And seven crowns upon his head. Go ahead. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. That's Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's the third part of the stars that the Romans cast down. Watch this. And they cast them to the earth. Mm -hmm. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Read that part again. This is the part. I'm just rushing through it, but I need you to understand this. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, Watch and they this. cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. And the dragon stood before the woman. Which was ready to be delivered. Which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who stood before Israel to devour the child as soon as it was born? As soon as he was born. Herod! and the Roman Empire. So what is Revelation? What is John the uh, Apostle teaching us? He's teaching us that the great red dragon is the so-called white man, beginning with Rome. Understand it? Read that part again in case I study. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Hold that. Go to Matthew 2. I'm going back. I got to show you. Matthew chapter 2. Uh, I think it's verse uh, 13. Matthew 2, verse 13. Come on. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Go back to Revelation now. I want that one verse that you just read about that dragon. Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. That's Judah, Benjamin, and Levi that conquered us. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So who is this great red dragon? Your slave master, the so-called white man. Now what you got to say, Mr. Minister, Miss Black Woman, Mr. Black Man, what you gonna say now, huh? You still the great white man. I just love him so much. The Bible calls him the devil. The Bible says he's a great red dragon. What you gonna say now? And this ain't our words. We're reading the Holy Bible, okay? <sighs> so brothers, sisters, we give all praises to the Most High. If you want more information, visit our website at www.israelunite.org and visit us on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash Nathaniel7. We also have a new website, www.originalroyalty.com. Brothers, sisters, we need your help. We need your donations, okay? We don't know how long we have on the air. You may see us today, and tomorrow we might not be on the air anymore. So this is up to you, brothers and sisters, to learn this truth. Write us, call us, learn it for yourself. we got to spread this gospel throughout the world, okay? So with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom. Shalom, Israel. For a copy of this show and all other shows, please visit our website at originalroyalty.com.